Great. I am so excited to have Drew Sood with us today. With the Canadian meal kit industry worth an estimated $1.5 billion, it's no surprise more and more companies are entering the space. For those who have never used a meal kit service, they deliver prepared ingredients to your door, which you can then use to cook custom recipes. One of the first movers in the Lower Mainland was Fresh Prep. From its humble beginnings in 2015 as a small retail location in Vancouver, Fresh Prep now delivers straight to homes across British Columbia and Alberta. The company sources local ingredients wherever possible, helping busy people and families create dinners in under 30 minutes. To accomplish its goal to become the most sustainable meal kit in Canada, Fresh Prep orders come in reusable cooler bags. In the first of the industry, Fresh Prep recently started offering zero waste kits, which are kept cool with reusable and recyclable ice packs. It also recycles any soft plastics that are returned by the customers. Our guest today is Drew Sood, co-founder and co-CEO of Fresh Prep. Drew was named one of BC Business's top 30 under 30 in 2018. When Drew isn't working on Fresh Prep, he enjoys playing tennis and trying but failing to stick to new diets. How ironic. <laughs> today on the show, we are going to discuss the meal prep industry, sustainability in the food sector, and the future of food. Thanks for being on Coastal Front today, Drew. Thanks for having me. Okay, Drew, so let's just jump into this. Let's start off by me asking you about what's for dinner. How did that question of what's for dinner eventually become what's known today as fresh prep? Sure, yeah. Um, after school, I started working full time and something I noticed pretty quickly was I started gaining a bit of weight. Um, I wasn't eating well. And it was a, a definitely a, a busy work environment and so there wasn't enough time. And we had this idea of fresh prep um, to have prepped ingredients ready to make cooking a lot easier and a lot quicker back in school, but we didn't really think much of it in the moment. But after this sort of real life experience of, of really truly being busy and not being able to cook for ourselves, we looked at that again and decided to give it a shot. We started pretty small. We basically thought, you know, the question was what's for dinner? And we had the answer, it was fresh prep. And we just, we, we thought we had the solution and we just had to implement it and, and go forward. And so we started off with a small retail shop and, you know, kind of naively went, went ahead and, and uh, started solving the what's for dinner problem, but ended up, you know, to this day solving all the business problems that come with trying to solve that one thing. Sure. Yeah. Sure, and your your two co-founders are Becky and Hussein. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So the three of you started this together. We did. Yeah. So uh, myself and Hussein, we know each other from elementary school, high school, went to university together. So pretty good friends. And Becky, we went to high school with as well, and so we all know each other from from you know high school. And so there's this instant trust that that we had, and that really helped us kind of build out the teams and and get to where we are today. And that was 2015, is that right? That's right, Okay, yeah. so we're 2021, so six years into this. Yeah. Um, give me a sense of how much the company's grown. I know you don't want to talk about financials, but maybe you can give me some metrics. Uh, number sure. of meals you deliver, number of employees you have, or something like who, how many customers you have. Let's get a sense of where you are today. Sure, yeah. When we started off, we were in about 750 square feet. It was the three of us. I uh, still remember our first employee. Today, we're at over 350 employees. Wow. Uh, over 250 drivers that work for us, and uh, we're, we're in about 60,000 square feet and definitely stretching for space, so looking for more. Wow. Uh, I guess with Alberta, we're, we're over 110,000 square feet now. Yeah. And so definitely a different life over, over those six years. Uh, we delivered to, you know, over 15,000 households every week. Yeah, we've, we hit, I think, uh, 2 million dinners had a couple of years ago and now we're closing cl like closing in on 10. Wow, that's incredible. And so that's pretty um And and yeah, who is the mastermind behind these amazing meals to have 2 million people <laughs> cook them? Is that would yourself? 100% be Becky. Okay. <laughs> that would not be myself. <laughs> okay. Uh or Hussein. Um she owns the product from start to finish. Uh we have over I think 1200 recipes right now in yeah. our database at this point and she herself has cooked like four to 500 of them. Wow, oh, amazing. So. so Drew, two competitors that come to mind are, are HelloFresh, which also owns Chef's Plate, yeah. as well as the good food market out of, uh, out of Montreal. Yeah. Can you talk about how 
Fresh Preps model is different than HelloFresh and good food? Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, there's differences on like the front end, like the customer facing side, and then on the actual operations as well. Okay. Uh, what the customer will notice is definitely a difference in the amount of prep that we do. So prep is in our name. Uh, we don't just give you the, the produce itself. We actually chop it up for you as long as the integrity of the produce is, is upheld. And so we do a lot more of the cutting for you, which allows you to do a lot more cooking and less cutting. And that allows us to make more intricate recipes without increasing the work for you. And so in those 30 minutes, like, you know, off the bat, the 30 minutes a bit more accurate uh, than it is for everybody else uh, because the, the chopping time is different for every customer, right? So by doing that, the, the amount of time you're spending is more accurate and then you are creating a much more intricate meal uh, with more complex flavors by the end of it because there's more cooking time. And so the customer will notice that on one hand. The other hand would be sustainability. Uh, it's a big differentiator for us. Um, our customers receive a cooler bag with internal packaging, with our zero waste kits. Even the internal packaging is reusable. The cooler bag is reusable. The ice packs are reusable. And we go through the effort to actually make that work. So, for example, like we have a whole building just to clean stuff. Mm. And so that's an operation that you know others wouldn't need. Gotcha. But we go through that because we find that it's a much better experience for the customer and, of course, much better for the environment. Um, so that's that's another bit of it. And then yeah. the last bit is just the service level and the touch points. Like we have our own drivers. And so, you know, the others are starting to build their fleets, but we've we've grown with our own drivers. We have about 250 of them now. So having everything in-house allows us to control it a lot better, I right? See. Instead of your delivery is going to come sometime tomorrow, it's going to be it'll come sometime tomorrow between 2 and 4. And by 12 p.m. tomorrow, you'll get a link that says, here's your driver, they're going to be there at 2.30, right? So you have a lot more... Um, and just, are these just drivers better. on payroll or are they outsourced? Uh, they're, they work for Fresh Prep directly as contractors. I see. Um, and so they... Yeah, they get paid from Fresh Prep directly. They're they're yeah. individuals. They're not yeah. they're not uh, companies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need big truck drivers driving down uh, the streets yeah. of Kitsilano and with uh, semis. Yeah. Just, these are probably small. Yeah, they're sedans, sedans. SUVs, yeah. uh, minivans, stuff okay. like that. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Th so that was on the front end. That's yeah. kind of what the customer will see as a difference. On the back end, there's definitely much more logistics and op automation that we need to um, address to actually make the front end work. Okay. Right, so the promises we're making on the front end uh, of actually prepping the food at an extra level without charging more than the competitors or providing all that reusability and sustainability to make that work, it's a it's a more complex sort of logistics heavy operation in the back end. So it's it's fun to uh, fun to manage for sure, and definitely lots of uh, problems to solve, which is what we we set out to do. Yeah, with respect to your idea, the first point you made, which is um, you you cut more. Yeah. Does that actually save you money in the sense that, uh, it, let, let, let's take an onion, right? Yeah. And, and let's say a meal only needs a half an onion. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming that your competitors are going to cut that onion in half or they're going to give the customer a full onion and then the, the, the customer is going to have extra onion left over. Yeah. But you can, um, you can take that onion and even cut it down into thirds perhaps. Yeah. And, and use without uh, having less food waste, I imagine. Yeah, definitely. Like at, on the customer's end, we are giving exactly what you need. There's n never, uh, you know, throw the half of the lemon away or use it later kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, we do give you exactly what you need. Um, in terms of whether it saves us money, I'd say no, because there's a lot of labor that goes into okay. into making that happen. Yeah. And it's more expensive than onions. Okay, right? fair, so, fair yeah. enough. Okay. Are you surprised that major grocery store chains haven't jumped into the space yet? You know, there have been attempts, especially in the States, and Canada's usually a bit you know, behind than the States for this kind of stuff. Um, there have been attempts in the past, and what I've kind of realized, and I've been asked you know, this question all the time, and that's always like the looming threat of the grocery store coming in, right, um, into the meal kit space. And what I've found is that when I look at grocers, I look at them as people that are really good at moving inventory. They're, they're retailers. This is a manufacturing logistics complex business. It, it's a different business. Um, the difference comes from the fact that their menu changes every single week. 
right? So you go to a restaurant and they have a menu and they run that and that's a restaurant business. There's some logistics involved. But in this case, we're just opening a new restaurant every single week, right? So so there's a lot Do of complexity to deal with. Uh, we'll bring back uh, an individual recipe, like the ones that are that are well liked. Uh, we'll bring them back, but not the whole menu. Yeah. It wouldn't be the exact menu, yeah. And so, you know, uh, inventory moves really quick, right? There's a lot to manage in terms of ingredients being used this week versus next week, and making sure everything is fresh. And so, when a grocer attempts to go into the meal kit space, I think oftentimes the biggest sort of failure point is variety. Because when you have a lot of inventory, which grocers obviously uh, often need to have, we don't because we actually get the orders in advance and then we make the food. And so that little difference requires them to have inventory, but once you have inventory, you want to limit the SKUs, right? You want to have just a few and you want to keep them consistent so you can carry over inventory and stuff like that. That doesn't work. Like that, that doesn't get Kay. adopted well. So, you know, for example, a grocer here has been doing beef teriyaki meal kits since like 2010, but nobody knows about it because the only one they do is beef teriyaki and you're going to eat that once in three months, right? Sure. You're not going to eat that every week. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the, the big difference okay. is that we have to manage this menu and there's a lot of resources that go into actually developing all these recipes. Okay. So Drew, where would you put the meal kit industry in context to the grocery store industry and this huge change and shift because of COVID into people doing takeout from restaurants? I'd put it, yeah, so it's kind of in between. It's in um, between. It's in between. Um, when you're looking at a takeout service, like you're hungry in the moment and you're, and you're buying um, to feed yourself right then. Whereas when you're going to a grocery store, you're planning for the whole week. Um, so that's more similar to fresh prep. You're getting the meals later. But once you bring everything back from the grocery store like I do, I don't end up cooking half of it because I have lost the, uh, the motivation that I had when I went there or did not plan properly or can't because I'm busy. And then fresh prep kind of aims to solve that. And so you're actually, you do the planning in advance just like you do with grocery stores, but then fresh prep helps you actually follow through on that plan. Our view of the world is that when people are looking for a food solution, um, they are looking for something that's very individual. So they're looking for something that um, applies to them specifically. And so through Fresh Prep, uh, you know, through meal kits, we're provided one certain type of solution. And with uh, ready to eat meals, we'll provide a solution for someone who doesn't have the time to cook in that moment. With salads and snacks, there's solutions for other mealtime sort of events uh, in the day. Now, if we're looking at someone and saying you you are an individual and you have your own tastes and preferences and maybe even dietary needs that that uh, we need to cater to, the way we can best service you in the future is by actually customizing everything to you, right? So right now, you know, the process for a lot of manufacturing firms is that you make the same thing and sell it to different people. And we're moving towards making something for you specifically. And so that in the past has been very expensive, right? And it's been very difficult to do, especially when you're talking about lower density sort of countries and, and lower volumes. but now we're at a point where we're building technology that allows us to actually service you with a custom meal without any additional cost and so that's kind of the future that we think um will that that everybody wants have you guys thought about with respect to the customer's wallet yeah which if you got uh two pockets one pocket is a pocket of money for restaurant experiences yeah and the other pocket is money for grocery purchases which pocket are you diving d dipping into more uh, between the two that's a good question um, it's probably into the restaurant pocket interesting um, not in the moment that they're about to spend that money but we we prevent them from spending on takeout I see. because they have this like easy enough option that will stop them from going with the more expensive takeout option the unhealthier takeout option or whatever are it you is. cheaper than restaurants we are. Yeah. Yes. Yes. More expensive than groceries? Um, depends on what you're cooking and how many people you're cooking for. Okay. If you're cooking for two and you're not able to manage your pantry, which is the case for most, including myself, 
then we are cheaper than grocery as well um, because we're the mar the retail margin that groceries take that's kind of where where we are too right so um, we are quite cost effective when you look at it from that perspective but if you're cooking for 30 people and you're paying on a per plate um, sort of basis then then we wouldn't be yeah. more cost effective sure. so the I more don't many families with 30 people yeah <laughs> well let's call it six. some complex or whatever right? <laughs> yeah I'm sure they're out there um, okay well let's talk a bit about inflation it's it's sure. coming up to the end of 2021 it's been a lot of talk about rising livability costs from housing fuel and of course food according to statistics canada food prices across the country have increased by 3.9 percent since last september but we also know that the most recent stat is this general inflation's up 4.4 yeah. how do you avoid or what do you how do you tackle this rising food cost is it something that you offload to your customers? Do you absorb it yourselves? Is it a little bit of both? How do you deal with that? Yeah, I actually, I, I heard today that the dairy farmers are instituting a, almost a 10% increase by February. So that's that's coming too. So th that's, you know, right. to your point. Well, dairy cartel, I like to call them, but that's a whole nother <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> They actually uh, banned me on Twitter. For, they're blocked oh, me on Twitter, the dairy Anyways, but yeah, I could see oh that boy. happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's coming up, and and so definitely food prices are going up everywhere. Okay. Um, there's a few ways for us to tackle like our our biggest value as a company is to actually deliver compelling value, and for us that means to give the customers something that they're wowed by, something more than what they're expecting for what they're paying, right? So a better experience, better food, better quality food, higher portions, everything all together. And so for us to maintain that while food prices are going up is definitely a challenge. Sure. Um, and so the way we look at it is, you know, one on one side, you try to reduce the amount of food you waste. That's very minimal to begin with for, for our business model in general and for Fresh Prep specifically. Um, but there's, you know, there's pros, internal processes and inventory control and sort of things we can do to just save money from, from the, the uh, loss of food. Mm -hmm. And then the other side is to just kind of try to find that margin elsewhere. And so is to automate, kind of rush towards automation and make sure that we can service the capacity that we need to in a, in a more efficient way. Um, and then finally, if sort of all those things fail, then we look at a price increase. Okay. Look, all businesses' profitability come down to one of two factors. In an ideal situation, you have both working in your favor. One of them is volume, yeah. the other is margins. I mean, yeah. that's the simplicity of business. Yeah. You want higher volume, wider margins. When you guys look at your business today and you look at your competitors in this new space called uh, meal kit, meal prep, meal kit, um, where do you see the opportunity for fresh prep? Is it is it more in trying to expand your margins or expand your volume? Definitely, it would lean towards volume. Volume. Um, towards volume, whether it's going to new geographic areas or increasing the number of customers we have here, or I guess a uh, bigger focus is to actually increase the, the share of the wallet that Fresh Prep's taking. Okay. The reason volume becomes a focus rather than margins is because there's not much place for the margins to go well, okay. in the food industry. Yeah. And that's kind of It's a not, pretty low, right? I mean, the, the yeah. grocery business is pretty tough margins. Exactly. Restaurants a little bit nicer, but not, it's tough. Yeah, yeah. So we we are a B Corp and we like to pay well and make sure there's good working conditions and all that. And that's not something we're willing to compromise on. Yeah. And so for us, the margins we are essentially given. should just maybe take given. a pause for a second, let the listeners know what a B Corp is. I sure, do, yeah. but that's a really interesting point that you're a B Corp. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Uh, B Corp is a benefit corporation. Uh, it's a designation you can get by going through a series of tests and uh, a certification <coughs> that says that you care about people, planets, and profits. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of measures the company's um, processes and decisions around everything from sustainability to even corporate governance, um, the way we treat our employees and, and uh, you know, our facilities and what kind of emissions we're, we're getting out of our facilities. So it's a definitely, definitely a tough uh, designation to go for especially for a food manufacturing business where there's a lot of moving parts um but we're pretty proud to to say that we went for that for a couple of years ago yeah that's really neat uh, good for um, you i know uh coast capital savings is a b corp as well as uh, yeah. patagonia yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah. right so 
Yeah. Um, are your meals, when you guys are prepping, and I've seen some images of like this sustainable box. We'll get into the sustainability part in yeah. a minute, Drew, but you got the sustainable box and it's got some some proteins and it has some vegetables, like maybe some t cut up tomatoes and cut up onions and then some spices. And is that all being put into these boxes by hand, by human hand, or is this machine done, or how does this work? Uh, mostly machine, and there's definitely really? there's definitely hands involved. Yeah. Um, that's what all our, our, our employees work on, but um, we definitely do a lot of volume, and so machines help us with that. So there's certain things that can't be done by machines, and yeah. they're done by hands, but uh, everything else is machined. You ever seen that video of that big arm that uh, as it makes a pizza? And it makes yeah. the same pizza every time. It's like amazing. Have you seen yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So is that the future of where a company like Fresh Prep would go, where you ultimately, I mean, i got to assume that kind of automation, while it might not be good for hiring new people, for profitability for Fresh Prep, uh, economies of scale, that kind of thing, is that the direction you want to go? Yeah, I, th I think we focus on that customizability first. And so sort of the moving towards more automation on that side will come after that. So not at the expense of customizability, but uh, definitely um, we're, we're looking to make it as easy as possible. And when it comes to employment, I mean, we're growing at a pretty high pace. So for everybody that's employed right now, I mean, it's, there's definitely tons of work to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, and, and, and how many people did you say you employ again? 350. And that's not yeah, including just the drivers? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's impressive. Um, I saw a video you did at a presentation uh, at UBC Sauter School of Business where you went through the difficulties around packaging. Yeah. Now you have something called the seal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you tell me how difficult it was to achieve the seal in your packaging and maybe let the listeners understand what sure. we're talking about here? Sure. What we're referring to is our zero waste kit. Okay. Um, it is a container with cups that hang inside the container and everything's closed with one lid. And this is sort of uh, this is the kit that we reuse over and over. So it goes to the customer's house. It has all the ingredients in it. The customer uses it, washes it, send it back. We wash it again and then reuse it. And so the idea behind um, sort of the design of this kit was that it has to be as simple as possible, has to be as inexpensive as possible because we don't want to be charging deposits or anything like that for this kit. And it has to be as durable as possible because it needs to be reusable. Um, and so the form that we came up with was this open top design, which also helps with automation. That, I guess, was another parameter. Um, but if you, put a con if you put a cup inside a container with rice in it next to a cup with soy sauce in it, you really need to make sure that the soy sauce doesn't get into the rice but we didn't want to do it before it's cooked at least before <laughs> it's cooked yeah exactly so um but we wanted to avoid having multiple lids or inner lids or anything like that we wanted to do it all with one lid to keep it simple and that was sort of the pain point we came up with the design of the tray you know before we even hired the first person we had a rough idea of what we wanted it was basically this it was dreamt up and that was the design um and then we, we got into the R&D process and we had something sort of working within seven months. And then it took two years after that simply wow. to get that lid to work because the sort of ingenuity of the lid is that it's one lid, but it seals every single cup individually, which is not that big of a deal until you bring in a thousand different recipes going into the same container. So the cups are different, right? One recipe has a lot of liquid, one recipe has a lot of, you know, spices some have only a few cups some have the whole tray full so the pressure levels on the lid changes and it's you know near near impossible to to get a perfect seal on everything and so it took us uh, and it's a very slow iteration to to actually go ahead and try to fix that uh, sounds so like a it nightmare. took us a while yeah it took like us a while we were <laughs> we were uh, six months from launching zero waste for the last four years <laughs> or three years and so it's working now, though. You got the lid, is it? You yeah, got a patent yeah. On it, we got the seal. Um, we have a working seal, like kind of yeah. working for our purposes. Yeah. Um, the patent is pending, um, but yeah, it's all launched. We've sold over a hundred thousand, uh, or sorry, no, over half a million dinners in zero waste already. Really? Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So these, ha so these zero waste. Let's talk about the the, the sustainability of your business because it seems like something you guys are pretty big on. Yeah. Yeah, okay. no, for sure. So let's start with the zero, zero waste kit. Now, I always get, I'm going to be the devil's advocate here because I'm right. always a little worried about companies greenwashing when yeah. they say zero waste. I mean, how is it possible 
that you can be zero waste. Walk me through this. Like when I get one of these kits shows up, what it, is it? First of all, is it is it delivered in a reusable container? Or yeah. Is it, okay. Yeah. So it's a reusable plastic container, much like a Rubbermaid, but it's our kit. Okay. Um, so you know, you use those at home for lunch all the time and and wash them all the time, just like that. It's the same material. We wash it all the time as well. Um, so you get that kit, you get ice packs, and you get a cooler bag. All of which comes back to us. All of which gets sanitized and reused. Okay. And so, it's if you were a meat it's eater, made of plastic. These are pla- like but heavy duty plastic. They're containers. plastic, yeah, like polypropylene. Yeah. Same. And then you've got a cleaning like a facility that sanitizes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I get my kit. It comes in a big Rubbermaid type box. I open it up because let's say I've ordered three meals for the week. Yeah. Um, and I got a family, so I got lots of kids to feed. Yeah. Not thirty, but I yeah, got a lot. Close. Feels like that sometimes. Yeah. And so I open it up, the container, and yeah. then there's some um, smaller kits within there. So that yeah, so you open up the cooler bag. That's cooler that's bag. our external packaging. Okay. Um, so you open it up, and there's smaller individual meal kits in there. By individual, I mean like it'll be uh, two or four servings in in one kit. Okay. What's the um, most number of servings that a kit would have? Within one, it'll be it'll be four, four. would be the max. Okay. Um, but it'll be uh, you just get more yeah, multiple more supplements. Multi- okay, yeah. gotcha. So you open up the lid. And then you have all the ingredients in these cups. Um, and so you use the recipe card and you uh, pour it into the pan and, and cook your meal. Uh, once you're done, you give the, the kit a rinse, you leave it back in the cooler bag and on your next delivery, you do a switch. Wow. So I don't have to wash dishes or anything. I just have to rinse them out. You have to rinse them out That's to it. make sure that it doesn't stain and, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And then that just goes yeah. back to you guys and then you're going to wash them from there. We're going to wash and them. And then reuse yeah. them. How long do these tend to last for? Um, they're good, like you know, s- they're good for about a hundred uses. But it really wow. comes down to the handling, right? So yeah. if you take it and you throw it to the ground, yeah, of course, it's not gonna last past yeah. that. Yeah. But meal didn't work. <laughs> with respect to um, with respect to your zero waste kit, what what other features make it zero waste? How does that work? Yeah. So what I just described is sort of a vegetarian meal, um, average meal. But sometimes there will be things that don't fit inside the kit that'll come with uh, with something outside. So for example, a whole head of lettuce, okay. and that'll come in a plastic just like it does at the grocery store. Okay. Um, so that plastic you can actually send back to us, and we do that right now with all of our meals, not just zero waste as well. So any meal you get from fresh prep all the plastic can be rinsed and just put back in the bag and we recycle it for you and you know there's a misconception that soft plastic can't be recycled it can't if you're going through the regular streams um you know the the issue is that it gets stuck in the trucks so the trucks just don't want it but the plastic in itself is very recyclable and so when we put it through our stream we have a dedicated like soft plastic stream that we take it through mm. and where and does so it go from there? there? So we partner with Urban Impact uh, oh, yeah. to recycle yeah. that plastic, and so they take over the ownership um, at l- from Fresh Prep, and then they've k- kind of given us all the audited reports of the the plastic going through the recycling streams. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Let's talk about sustainability from the perspective of the the drivers. Okay. Yeah. Because one of the questions, again, being devil's advocate, how how are you sustainable by having small meals versus like look if i take my family to the grocery store and i load up for the week the carbon footprint of like me driving the car uh you know a kilometer down the street to the grocery store yeah. versus like 200 plus drivers driving all around the place unless they're all driving tesla electric cars yeah how do you address that from a sustainability perspective sure we have to look at it holistically for sure i mean when we're looking at a grocery store, the amount of energy that they consume and the carbon footprint is vastly different from a meal kit. And this has nothing to do with zero waste or or our recycling or sustainability. Meal kits in general are much more efficient than grocery stores just because of the food waste that we save and then the energy that we save because we don't have these open coolers for everybody to come and, you know, look at look at all the ingredients. Um, So there's that. When it comes to the actual emissions from the car itself, um, because of the density we have, like we're sending 10 to 12 drivers to downtown Vancouver at the same time. Okay. And so you can imagine how much that driver covers. It's like four blocks, right? So at the density that we're at, an average driver 
in the denser areas is not driving more than half a kilometer. Oh, so they're driving very short like distances. Very short between yeah. deliveries, right? And so overall, like if we average everything, our drivers do around one and a half kilometers per delivery. And so it's, it's very similar to grocery store in that regard. Um, and people get a week's worth. Okay. Actually. Yeah. You, you must have food waste at your facilities, especially if you're cutting. Go back to the concept of onions. I mean, yeah. people don't want the core or the outside of the onions. So yeah. what do you do with your food waste? Oh, it all gets composted. So if we're talking about like actual trims, yeah, um, trims. That, that, that gets composted. Yeah. Um, and then if we're talking about like leftovers, then of course we distribute it out between our employees. It's a great perk. Oh, really? <laughs> Come work for Fresh Prep. Yeah. Um, and then past that, we donated to our to a local charity here, okay. to the Kawasa Neighborhood House. Okay. What is yeah. it called? Kawasa Neighborhood House. Okay. Oh, I've yeah. heard about this organization. They they yeah. provide meals and food to uh, lower income individuals, that's right. homeless, and that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's, yeah, great. that's right. So you yeah, partner with so those guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've been with them for a long time. You, now you've recently expanded into Alberta, Drew. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about your expansion plans. Do you see yourself going further east? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like all the way to yeah. Halifax? What's the all plan the here? Yeah. We'll definitely go to like the major markets in the east. So Toronto, uh, Montreal is sort of next on the table, with Toronto being sort of the next big one, or yeah. Ontario all over. Right in the Good Foods uh, backyard here. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're looking forward to it. For us, uh, Alberta is a fantastic sort of next step. Um, it's, uh, it's a different market than BC, and we really want to see how we perform sort of outside of our home home territory now last quarter uh the good speaking of the good food market last quarter they f saw their very first decline in net subscribers yeah since they began operations in 2014 um, i also did a quick survey of my team here yeah and uh there i asked what there were 12 of us including myself yeah two of the 12 of us have never used this meal kit service before 10 have okay uh I think one or two used yourselves. Most of them used f uh, used HelloFresh. Okay. None of them are using it today. Can you address the attrition rate and what that looks like in your industry and how you solve that problem? Sure. Um, so it's it's very different for fresh prep versus the rest of the industry, okay. and there's very good reason for it. Sure. Um, in our competitor's business model, there's shipping involved. There's a lot of packaging involved. And I think food, food's one of those things that's the worst thing to ship. It, it, it doesn't cost very much. It's low value product, but weighs a lot and needs to be shipped right away with a lot of packaging to keep it cold. All right. So it's one of those things that I, I believe just doesn't belong in that shipping channel. When you add up the costs of all that, the amount of packaging and the the extreme shipping costs that it takes to get that box over there's not much left to actually spend on the food there's not much left to spend on the food or the the labor that it would take to make sure that food is you know solving the problem the what's for dinner problem easily and so we take that by doing it ourselves it's more complex right we can't scale in the same way but we take that margin and put it into the actual food and we put it into the labor that helps make that food better. And so at the end of the day, like I believe our, our customers are just having a much better experience. Yeah, you and spoke they're, about they're that earlier. Actually, yeah. yeah, and they're getting better just- Better meal, better experience, yeah. easier to cook, more time cooking, less time cutting. Yeah, exactly. So they're, they're just getting more value. We're delivering compelling value when it comes to the, the meal kit offering. And then at, that's just very difficult to do under the other models. And so while everyone's tried a meal kit out there, like there's a lot of people that have, I and mean, there's lots of promotional offers, um, but you know, people that, that get value out of the offering are the people that continue to order, right? So Sure, I mean, that's what you want as customers, of course. Exactly, yeah. 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 So we what, what put a lot of Do you have a description of who your typical customer is? Like, what, is there a pretty generic profile or are they yeah, though there's uh, there's a couple different kind of core customers. There's the the customer that doesn't cook at all. That's, that's all about takeout, um, but ends up using fresh prep to sort of learn how to cook, uh, to save some money, and to maybe feel more adult is what we found in our surveys. That's okay. what they said. <laughs> um, there's the other customer that's really busy um, and just is all about 
making their life as efficient and optimizing as possible. You know, there's a, someone that has a subscription service for not just fresh prep, but a few other things, um, you know, and, and uses what they, what's available at hand to make their life easier and to achieve more. Okay. Um, and then there's that other customer who's, who's sort of curious, um, and wants to do everything by themselves. And so they, they want to know the ingredients that are going into the food. They're very concerned about that and finds our satisfaction knowing that they created something from ground up, right? So, and Fresh Prep lets you feel that way without having to put in the, the background effort that it takes to make that happen. Right. Um, so you can check the freshness of, of the, uh, the food before you put it into the pan, right? Okay. And so these customers are usually millennials um, and a bit older as well. But really, there's people uh, all ages kind of using fresh prep, um, but it strikes uh, a chord with millennials for sure. Like yeah. that's the quickest. Drew, can you talk a bit more about your, um, you obviously support the local economy by hiring all these people yeah. and all these drivers. What about supporting local suppliers? Is that something that's big for you guys? Yeah, we, we take a lot of pride in sort of working extra hard to, to partner with local suppliers. Um, we do everything from sort of medium to larger suppliers like Bosa Foods or inner city packers for our meats and our dairy and, and stuff like that, some pantry items. But then we also go to a lot of specialty suppliers for our ingredients that are a bit more specialty, like fresh noodles or fresh tofu or uh, tempeh. Um, so that's on the meal kit side. We, we put a lot of effort in to actually have a, a big supplier list and deal with with the complications there to make sure we're, we're supporting local producers. Um, and then on our add-ons platform, we try to get uh, local food purveyors onto that platform through Fresh Prep. So for example- Sorry, what is add-ons platform? What is that? Uh, so add-ons is, is stuff you can buy alongside the meal kits. So you oh, can buy I desserts, see. you can buy juices, oh, gotcha. um, you know, you can buy uh, mango lassi from a local uh, supplier yeah. you could buy bread from Nelson and Siegel you can buy the lemon square dessert and so all these like really loved I ate before brands. we started having this conversation <laughs> yeah all, all, all these really loved brands that are really hard to get to otherwise you know yeah. there's a bit of a distribution issue we help solve that okay. uh, through fresh bread we make it really easy for you to try Polly Fox Bakery or um, that's or really the, cool. Being yeah, able to partner Aussie with Pie Guy. Yeah. Yeah, the Aussie Pie Guy. He's great. Yeah, yeah. So you can get markets. that on yeah. Fresh Prep. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Corporately, uh, you guys are private company, are you? We are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And any intentions of going public? What's the future look like? That kind of thing. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing determined so far. Uh, we did just finish a, a funding round. Um, our Series B with Yellow Point Equity Partners, participation with Renewal as well. Yeah. Um, so we're we're well funded, and at this point. Um, going public is not really something actively that we're looking at okay yeah if people want to become a customer yeah a fresh prep yeah uh, they just go to your website and sign up how does that process work is it pretty easy you can do it from your phone yeah no it's super easy it's all online uh, you can use your phone or computer or whatever and just go to freshprep.ca and follow the sign up flow there uh, there's a really great promo you can get um, so your first week, two meals, two dinners for less than 25 bucks delivered oh, wow. to your door. And yep. so that's, that's, you can definitely try it out and there's no commitment. Okay. You, you try it out for your first week, get an awesome deal. And if you don't like it, we'll pick up the cooler bags. It's all good. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a, I'm a husband with a wife and three young kids going into the sign up. What should I be thinking about as far as like, or does, is this part of the sign up trying to is helping me decide or is like, what should I maybe be prepared for other than having my credit card ready to, to go and do the sign up? Is there something I should be thinking about? Yeah, I mean, we ask for your dietary restrictions because we try to pick meals for you. You can, of course, go in and override that with yeah. whatever you'd like. Uh, but if you want that taken into account in like the pre-selections, you can put in your dietary restrictions. Uh, the size of the meals, I can tell you that the serving portion, the portion sizes are quite large. So if you have young kids, you wanna just think about that and the number of servings you're buying. Um, and then of course, once you're signed up, take a look at the add-ons menu for all the local local purveyors that are on there. Yeah, yeah. great. Uh, orders are, I think you told me before, orders are delivered w once or twice a week, is that how it uh, works? For each customer, it's, it's once a week. Yes. Uh, we deliver about five days a week, and depending on where you live, there's lots of different options for delivery. Okay. So you just pick whatever works okay. best for you. Excellent. 
Yeah. Well, Drew, this is very exciting. I'm very excited for you guys. I know when you first uh, approached a few people within uh, within our old offices, when you first started, yeah, uh, I remember William saying like to me, well, like, well, who would ever order food and have it delivered? Then you got to cook it still. But yeah. you guys obviously were, uh, you know, you, you saw the future. It's become a big industry. And I hope you do expand into Montreal and be able to get to across the country. This is very exciting for you guys, and I, I hope you have a continued success. So Thank you. Yeah, so thanks yeah, for being thank on you. Coastal Front, and um, hopefully our listeners will try out Fresh Prep. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. This is super fun. Great. Drew Sood, yeah. uh, co-founder of Fresh Prep uh, on Coastal Front. Thanks for being on the show today. Thanks. Yeah.